Are you talking no. first? You want me to talk? You all right, today what we're going to do is we're going to go over, well, I guess I should introduce myself. My name is Trevor Tysman, and this is uh, Marlon McQueen, the coach. Uh, basically, we just want to give everybody an opportunity to see um, how the program can build with you at your home. You know, we want to get you the bands in your hands, and we want to show you step by step how it goes, how you should figure out what level you're on, intermediate or advanced, or maybe even beginner. We want to try and figure out your faults, whether we need to get you more flexible, build strength, isolate different muscle groups. Or, uh, you know, we just want to kind of start from square one. Coach well, Jones, kind, of, kind of use me as a guinea pig. I'm 52 years old, and I'm in what I would consider decent shape, good shape. I want to get in better shape, and one of the things that I want is more flexibility. And so Trevor uh, is, a, is a strength coach and a trainer, and he's going to take me through some exercises, some things that you'll be able to do, and then we're going to sort of monitor my progress. I, I would consider myself to be in the intermediate class, but I want to get to the advanced class. Right, right. Uh, we got him a, a heart rate monitor here. You can find them in all kinds of different places. This one's just a simple watch. You push the button, and it'll tell you your heart rate. That's kind of important for people that you know haven't been working out much. We don't want to take you up there too high in your heart rate, and uh, we want to make sure that you're gauging your heart rate as we do this. Right now, I'm at about 72 and I believe that's 36%, right? Yep, 36% right. of your maximal rate. But if you just watch your heart rate, most of the time we want to stay under about 140, 150 if you guys are kind of beginning. So uh, you always want to start with a warm up. So why don't we just go ahead and start getting loose? Okay. We're going to go with a simple knee touch. Kind of get the blood flowing a little bit. Takes longer than my age. <laughs> now, what these bands can do for you now is get your heart rate up faster which is going to get you loose quicker and make you get in your workout faster. Let's go ahead and move from this. Let's get the butt a little bit loose. We'll get out to the side. If we need a chair, we can go grab a chair. Yeah, are you uh, not touching when you come down or does that depend on your balance level? Basically just a balance level. I can stay up on one foot. Now if you need to touch, everyone should always be working to work on one foot when we get with the bands because that's going to slowly increase our balance and just help us in our everyday life. Go ahead and switch. You get a little bit of that burn in your butt. Yeah, I'm feeling it right here in the Good. upper quads too. Good. And you can touch just like this and go on up. You don't have to keep up with us by any means. We're just trying to test somebody out and show you exactly how the process works. And it doesn't really take long. You can already feel even a little bit of cardio there. Oh yeah, definitely. Let's go ahead and spread out just a little bit. You can have your toes straight. Remember when we squat, we keep our knees behind our toes. Just okay. go ahead and get a little bit of a baby squat. We don't need much depth. Just trying to get the blood flowing a little bit. After this set, why don't we go ahead and check your heart rate. Okay. And again, you can put your hands out in front of you for balance. You can put them on your hips. But the big key is to make sure that your knees stay behind your toes. It's pretty easy to sometimes want to go like this. Yeah. The, I mean, the butt's got to sit back a little bit and go down. Good, good, good. Okay. If you want to turn sideways even, you can kind of show them the form a little bit. This is what we're talking about with the knees over the toes. Go ahead and slide forward. See, that's what we don't you, want. You can feel that, that pressure right there. It's more just all back in your hips. The squat's more about your butt and your hips than it is about your knees. Sometimes if you lean forward, it isn't gonna, you're not going to feel it as much. So that's why people have a tendency it, I call it cheating. When you're sitting back here, you're really going to feel it. Right. Back right. There. All right. So let's uh, take a look here. Sometimes it takes a minute. It's not a hundred dollar device by any means. 87. So we so, want to get our heart rate up just a little bit higher than that before we stretch. So why don't we go ahead and we'll get small little kickers for the thighs. And again, we're doing, you can, you can come down and not touch if, you, if the balance is okay or using a sister. Um, and if you need to touch, that's fine too. And depending on what level you are, you can always grab a chair. Use it for a little bit of a balance point. Just kind of want to get the heart rate up. We can even turn this into a bit of a soldier. So when you lift your leg, get a little bit of your hands going. The more movement we get, the more calories we burn. So let's go ahead and get loose. 
Good. Switch it up. Harder to take the right right leg, left left arm. Right, right. So now uh, later on we're going to have some band individual stretches, but for now we're just going to take this as a beginner, and we just want to get into people uh, things that people have actually seen before. So let's go ahead and unclip one side of your bands. And we're just going to get a good stretch in. So get a wide base. We're going to take our hands down to our left toe. Or or try to. Or try to, yeah, exactly. And when you're stretching, you don't want to take anything into pain. If you feel a good pull, that's where you want to stay. Hold it for close to about a 20 second count. Then go ahead and come up to the right side. Part of what we're doing here is I want to see my progress because I have told Trevor that I, I want to definitely increase my flexibility. I think it's okay but not at the level I would like for it to be. Let's go ahead and roll on to the middle. We thought this would be a good tool for everyone to see basically how to gauge your own progress and show you know, where you need to start out, which video you might need, which level you're at, and this is going to be a good gauge. And Coach McQueen here is going to be our guinea pig. Let's go ahead and have a seat. Stretch out our groin. You're going to put your feet together like this. Kind of roll forward and get your groin stretched. More we're flexible. It, yep. or we... No rocking. You don't no ever rock. want to rock when you're stretching. So for more flexible people, try and slide your heels towards your butt more and lean forward. Good. Now a big thing that a lot of people have is tight backs. So what we want to do now is we're going to go ahead and lay back. You want to take your foot and you want to hold your foot as you roll it over like this. So you almost want to do an iron cross. You want to straighten this leg out and you want to let this foot come down, but you want to make sure it stays up here. So if you almost want to grab it like this just so it stays, feel that right in your butt? Right here. Good. Most people think that your low back is because your low back hurts, but most of the time it's because of tight hamstrings, a tight glute or even a tight low back, but normally your legs are what cause that low back pain. I'm gonna go ahead and switch sides. Good. Yeah, you can really feel that right here. Yep, you wanna slide that leg out, there you go. Good. You always wanna get a good pull when you're stretching. Don't, don't go too far to where it's hurting, but make sure you get a good hold. Okay, now we're gonna roll back over. This one is again for your lower back. You want to take your arms around your knees like this, and you want to kind of pull your knees to your chest. Feel that pulling in your low back? Pulling my ass, too. Yeah, yeah. Now this is important, especially when people don't work out in different things. You get tighter in different areas, and the low back is, is one of the first ones to go. Good, now go ahead and lay your legs down. I'm gonna bend your knees up up here. We're going to do a little active movement. So we're going to let them slide to the left, let them slide to the right. Good. Get the back good and loose. And normally we want to lay our hands down on the carpet or you can put them behind your head. Just anything that gives you a good base. If you ever have any pain during any back exercise, you need to stop immediately. You want me to try to go all the way to the floor? Yeah, if you can. Just trying to get it good and loose. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stand up. Uh, most people will probably need a chair for this. I sometimes even need a chair for this, but we're just going to do a quad stretch. So you're going to hold your laces. I think I can do a little bit. And now here, you don't want to worry about arching your back or anything like that. You want to try to have a straight line. You want to turn sideways. You want to be in a straight line. And basically by leaving your knee down below, you want to roll your hips forward and that's going to get a good pull on your quad. Maybe throw that all up and down yep. here. And your other leg. And again, you want to try and rock your hips forward. So you want to get a little bit of your... Yep. Right there. Yep. But you rock your hips forward right into the quad. Good. Okay. Kind of yep. loose. I feel pretty good. Okay. 
Now this isn't the full on stretch that we're normally going to do in some of our videos, but we just kind of want to get a little taste for flexibility and see where basically his level is. Right, let's go ahead and clip back up. And again, we're going to start out slow today. In some of our videos, we might up the intensity from the get-go, but here we're going to start kind of slow. Um, why don't we start with some squats again? Okay. So this time we're going to start wider. a little wider. Wider. Yep. All right. Always when we're squatting, though, we're laying back into our butt. So we're going to do little half squats again, try and get the heart rate up a bit. Good. Even wider. Okay. How's that feeling? You all right? Yeah. Okay. Now. As you can see on him, he kind of is letting his chest fall all the way forward. A lot of people do it. So you want to make sure you keep your chest up high and sitting in your thighs. There you go. Good. Well, yeah, that hurt that. You can feel that in the butt a lot more. Yeah. Now we're going to rock over to the stomp. Yep. Trying to stay down. Yeah, we want to try and stay as low as we can because the more we stay low, the more our glutes are going to fire. I know all you ladies like to have nice butts, so. I can feel that in the glutes. I actually feel that in the hip, too. Good. Or maybe, I don't know, stand down low enough. Yep, yep. The lower you go, the... Now we're going to go right back more. into a bit of a squat. Okay. Uh, you just stay up straight. Stay up squeezing your abs. A lot of people, when they squat, too, they want to arch their back and really squeeze their back tight. We don't want to do that. You want to try and squeeze your whole core and keep the weight towards the back. Good. How's the heart rate? Probably up. 105. Now, as you guys do this along with us, basically what I do with my clients, the different people I work with, is I try and gauge basically where their heart rate goes with exercises. So right now, I'd say we're about intermediate, and we're going to start knocking it up a bit to see basically what the coach can do. Okay, so now we're going to go from, going to try the good old okay. cross trappers and come up with your knee. Good. And coming down with the arms. Right. Slow it down a little bit. Keep your balance. There you go. Let me move this chair out of your way. You're about ready to kick it across the room. <laughs> Give me five minutes. I'm ready to sit in. Switch sides. Now he's going more of a straight up across to fire the oblique more. You get a little bit more of a twist when you start. And you want to take your knee to the other shoulder. Your other shoulder. There you yeah. go. A little bit more of a twist. Good. How are we feeling? Pretty good. Good. A little bit more cardio. I can feel it. Good. All right. How's good. that feeling? Let's good. take your heart right after a simple, fast movement. One twenty and one exercise that jumped up fifteen. And then about one hundred five to one twenty. One hundred five to one twenty. You all right? Yep, I'm good. So it's a little gassy. Gas here. Okay. It's all right. I get a, I get an age. <laughs> Something. All right. Now, basically, we're basically what I want to do is I want to take his heart rate down just a hair. We don't want to max him out. We want to continue to have a workout. So why don't we spread out a little bit? You sit in your legs again. We're gonna try to fire them glutes a little bit. We're gonna shuffle real slow. So we'll why don't you shuffle up, this way? Let's shuffle this way so the viewers can see. There we go. Just like that. Whenever you shuffle, you want to keep your feet wide. We don't want to bring our feet all the way together. Go ahead and bring your foot all the way together one time. It's not what we want. We want to stay wide so the glutes stay fired the entire time. Good. That feels good. I can feel it coming down. Right, right, all right. Slow your breathing down a little bit. Take a quick break. If you all are doing it with us, take a quick break as well. Walk around a bit. How we doing, Coach? I'm doing all right, man. I got to. I gotta walk the walk. Yep, yep. 115. 115. So we went back down 10. Good. We're back down 5. We're at 120. One, right? Yeah, back down 5. Okay. Catch your breath a little bit. Another couple seconds. Okay. All right. Now we're gonna move into a little bit. It's a little weaker cardio, but we're gonna hit the hip flexors a little bit. So uh, depending on the level, if you can get over the chair and back over the chair, and if that's giving you any pain, and stay a little lower. Let's try getting that resistance, but if not, go ahead and get it up. Let's burn some cows. So Five we're minutes. getting stretching. We are the bands are helping us get cardio too. Definitely. Okay, go to the other one. Yep. Switch sides. 
Are you trying to keep this foot straight forward? Yep, you want to try and fire as much of the hips as you can. So by keeping this foot in the middle, you're opening up your hips or firing the glutes more and the hip flexors are getting a lot more work. And now see, you're kind of stepping back a little bit. You just want we don't want this. We want to almost be mobile. We want to make our hips work. Okay. Just hey. over and back. Then. Yep. Just as if it was like a pole or something, not as much a large chair. Okay. A little harder that way. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Yep. Now we're yeah. going to take your heart rate up a little bit. This is called a teeter totter. Basically, what we're going to do is you're going to start with your feet close together, and you're going to start getting up and down. Then you're going to get wider, 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 wider. Keep getting out there all the way out. There you go. And bring it back in. Slowly. Yep. Then get wider, wider. And when you get out to the widths of it, you want to try and fire and fire and fire, and your glutes are going to get more and more. A little wider, a little wider, a little wider. There you go. And bring it back in. How's the legs feeling? Pretty good. Good. And one more time out. Takes, takes a balance of coordination, too. Yep. Yeah, we'll, go, right we'll go right into it, try and keep your heart rate up. Big soldiers. More arms, the more calories. There you go. Make sure you're getting that good back swing, too. Getting all crossed up. There you go. You know. There we go. Yeah, that's. I'd say we're going to get the heart rate up pretty good. It doesn't take long. Right, right. It, it jumps up quick. You go ahead and relax. Check your heart rate. <clears throat> One twenty-seven, jumped up dramatically in two exercises. So now we're going to slow things down a little bit. And we're going to do some muscle isolation. So while we go on our hands and knees, now all things that we do on our hands and knees and different things, you can isolate to make it harder or easier. Right now we're going to do a little bit of a fire hydrant. I'll kind of give you this look. So you're going to stand from the side. You're going to have a good flat back, just like he's got. Roll your hips out. So now you're going to lift your knee out to the side. Fire hydrant. There you go. Now, if this ever does anything to your back and you feel it at all, you can do a modified version where your foot stays down and you kind of pivot on your foot just like that. Good. Get about 10 on each side for me. Uh-oh, jumping off. You want the advance, don't you? <laughs> I might not. Well, by the time we're done. Yeah, tomorrow you might not want the advance. Well, like I said, I, you know, I think I'm in shape. Well, what I wanted to do was have somebody train me besides by training myself. A lot of times when I'm training, I don't get a chance to do it as much. Yep. So then if we, if I had a little bit of pain or something, I could just do it like this with the, with right. the foot down. Let's go ahead and fire the hammies and the glutes a little bit. You move over to the side a little more so the uh, camera can see you. Okay. Move forward a little so you, there we go. All right, now we're going to lift our leg out behind us. It's called a reverse leg raise. So we're going to try and put this leg to the ceiling, just like that. Straight up? Good. Now most people do this, and this is what we want to shy away from. You want to keep your hip line straight to the ground. So keep your hip line okay. straight to the ground. So I won't be able to go as high. Right. So we're trying to get our glute more involved than our hamstring. As soon as you let your hip open up, you're going to roll open, and we're not going to target the right muscles. I can really feel it in the glute and the hamstring. Good, good. I'm actually getting some good glute action down here on the backside. And all of this is great core stability. He's having to hold his abs tight, and it's basically working your whole core, which is going to help in every aspect of life. Go ahead and switch up. There you go. So here, instead of leaning. Right. Do that with yeah. your other leg so they can see it. Oh, well, let's turn around this yeah. way. That other leg's a little tight. <laughs> so I can't go as high. But I'm getting very good glute action, very His good hips are lined up. Yep. And now go ahead and open unless up. Unless I'm going like that, I'm not getting it. Right, right, right. Okay. Now remember, everything that you do if we're working our core, which these bands directly hit, is going to help you with everything in life. Getting the mail, bending over to pick up your grandkids, moving around to pick up your own kids. Any, anything core stability is the name of the game, and that's what we're trying to work on here. Uh, why don't we do some abs? Just finish okay. up with a little bit of abs. Okay. And then at the end, I want to. See where I'm at flexibility-wise. Okay. Okay. More abs. 
All right, so first we'll start with the in and out. You're gonna put your hands facing the front on the ground. Okay. You're gonna come in and we're gonna go out so the bands work. There we go. Now, can you explain a little bit about how the bands are adding to this? Uh, yeah, basically, when you add resistance to your legs, your lower abs and your core are firing so much more. Your core is not just about a six pack down the middle. You have all kinds of muscles that go around your whole midsection that help you balance and work better in anything you do. So by flexing these bands out wide, you're flexing all these muscles in your legs and through your bottom half. The top two abs are always very easy to hit. So by using these bands, you're gonna fire them lower four that are so tough to get much easier. Good. Yeah, pretty good. Let's move on to a, this is a little bit of a beginner one, but we're gonna crunch and split with our knees. Good. Hands behind the head or you want them out here? Wherever you feel comfortable. Normally yeah. some people like to have their hands on their head because of their neck, to support their neck, which is fine. And if you don't have any neck problems, just go ahead and crunch normal. You can feel that pretty good. Yep. And now when you do these, you want to try and work the bands as much as possible. So you want to split them out wide. They're good. Now let's go into a scissor. You want to turn sideways so the camera can see you. Good. You want to put your hands under your butt for a little low back support. Yep. You want out scissor here? Nope. We're going to have our legs out straight. Down. Yep, legs straight, really flex them bands, good. Now the scissor is one of the, mo the biggest ones that you can feel a complete difference with or without the bands. How are your lower abs feeling? They're tight. Good, good. Really getting good action. I think we're testing the coach a little bit here. All right, put your feet on the ground, take a quick break, you get a good burn there? Yeah. Let's roll it on over to the oblique, give the middles a section, or yeah. a little bit of rest. Yep, so now you're gonna Crunch the oblique and you're gonna lift one leg. Let's put the bands to work again. We're not gonna go very high, right? Yep, you're gonna take this hand down. You're gonna put this hand down in front of you. And we're gonna kinda, you can put this wherever you want, but you're gonna crunch up just like that. Good. The more you can take basically your shoulder to the back part of your butt, the more we're gonna work our oblique. Feel that real good in your oblique. Another point here with the toe, you never want to roll your toe out because, again, we're not hitting the right muscle groups. If we stay turned like this, it's going to run down. We're going to fire our glutes as well as our obliques. So if I'm up here, I'm sort of cheating. Right. You're getting more of a thigh exercise, and we don't want that for this exercise. Okay. Good. Why don't you okay. roll over? Get the other side. It's real easy to try to or try to twist back instead of really. Right. Hitting right there. Hey, you want to shift your butt forward a little bit. Kind of cheating on me a little. There we go. There. I'm getting tired. Now I crunch? Good. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's much. Much more of the oblique. Good. Give me about 10 more. Good. Now, again, see as it gets tired, this toe rolls up, sure just does. as many people will. So as you get tired, cut the reps off. Just take a break. We want to do things right so we don't get hurt. Good, take a break. How are we feeling? How's the heart rate on the abs? Here. One more. Let's go. We're at a good calorie burn. Just trying to test the coach out a little bit here. Let's, let's get a little more advanced on this one. Now we're going to do the scissor kick, but we're going to add a crunch to it. Okay, so we'll go ahead. So we're going to come here. Go in there. Here. Oh. Now these are going to get you quick. So if. If you're challenged at all with these, definitely just do at least 10 and take a break. We want to maintain form. That's good burn. Pretty good burn right there. All right, watch you stand up. Now that's just a basic, basic routine. If we were going to do that, we'd do that for probably 30 minutes or so so we could get a good fat burn. But as for now, you know, we just kind of want to test him out and see where he's at and we'll continue with more videos as workouts come.